Hey Cancers, hope you guys are doing well. Cleanse your energy. <laughs> Cleanse your trash energy, Cancer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> How are you? Hope you're having a good week. Hope everyone's doing splendid. Um, quick announcements. One, I'm not doing personal readings anymore for a little bit. Taking a break, taking some time off. If you want to join my wait list, you're not locking yourself into anything. You don't got to pay for anything. It's just letting me know, hey, when you reopen, I'd like to be the first to know. So people on the wait list, I am going to reach out to you guys by email, let you know I'm reopened, ask if you want to book a reading before I open it up to everybody else. So you'll just be the first to know. And at that point, you can be like, you know what? I'm not really, I don't really want one right now. That's completely fine. I'm not going to get upset about it at all. It's an option for you. Uh, Anubis reading. I wanted to do a channel for Anubis and Ogun for Black History Month. I did Ogun last week and Anubis. I did not have a chance to. Other things, you know, came in the way. So I'm going to be doing that on Saturday. Uh, Saturn is Anubis's ruling planet. Saturday is Saturn Day. Um, so if you like Egyptian myth, if you connect to Anubis, if you want to watch that, I will be channeling his energy. It'll be a good time. Um, he usually likes to drop bombs on people. So the last time I worked with Anubis, I did a who is doing magic on you and why, and those were really intense readings. Um, so it'll he'll be dropping some truth bombs for sure. Um, other thing, I have two new oils in my shop. I have more stuff coming out soon. Um, I'm super excited about these though. I have um, anointing oils, the ritual oils, they're all natural. It's a, oil, it's a blend of different carrier oils, essential oils, herbs, and charged crystals. So my newest two are Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine. Um, these are uh, available separately for 18 or you can get them in a set for 30. I wanted these up on my website today, but I did not have a chance to do a little photo shoot with them and now it is dark outside. So that will be up tomorrow morning if you would like. Okay, what do Cancers need to know? Strength card, Five of Cups, Nine of Wands. Could be dealing with a Leo. Justice, could be dealing with a uh, Libra. Get one more, please. That was four more, I'll take this one. Nine of Wands. Temperance at the bottom of the deck. What is this card? What is it, alien? Is it hermit? <laughs> I don't remember which card this is. What is number nine in tarot? Crap. <laughs> um... It's gotta be uh, the Hermit card, right? I can't remember, crap. Um, <laughs> one sec, okay. Um, overcoming a situation, um, something from your past here made you defensive. There is going to be justice in your situation. Somebody was coming in and out, could have even been a player with the Knight of Wands. Somebody coming in for sex and then, you know, making all these promises, then abandoning, okay, yeah, it is Hermit. I was correct, okay. Um, I don't know why I second guess myself. Um, there's gonna be justice in the situation here. Somebody was coming in and out of your life, coming in for sex, disappearing. Um, there is some dishonesty here, seven of swords, selfishness with the page, uh, not page of cups, nine of cups, temperance. They're wanting to work it out. Something, you know, angels are interfering. You're gonna, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be worked out. Somebody's doing some soul searching about chaotic energy in their life. They're waiting because they're afraid that you're gonna reject them. There are some things that they need to walk away from so that they can be able to give to this relationship. Somebody, uh, somebody wanted to be with you, somebody had feelings for you, wanted a relationship with you, but it was a start-stop energy. They would come in, 
Um, it, it would seem like it was gonna go somewhere. It would be like really passionate when they would come in and then they would just kind of disappear. And it made you, left you feeling like they were just using you for sex here. It made you defensive towards them um, to where you may have cut this person off or there's just been some hard feelings here. Um, this person is wanting to work things out now. I get that they had a lot of wounds from their past. Strength card and then five of cups. They're regretful, they're sorry for what they did. They were stuck in their past here. Um, it made them defensive. Nine of wands. Justice, there is gonna be justice in this situation. Uh, Knight of wands. Nine of wands, Knight of wands. Those always sound similar when I say them. Um, they're wanting to work things out now because they're realizing that you know they are wishing for you. I get that this person was very selfish before and it was more so a defense mechanism. They have some wounds from their past. They may have been abused in their past and it, it got to the point where they're very defensive in relationships and they are selfish. So they focus on what they want Anytime the relationship wasn't exactly what they wanted, they would blow you off and then, you know, maybe you've even gone and hooked up with other people with the Knight of Wands. This is a player type energy. I get that it's more so a defense mechanism because they have a lot of wounds from their past that make them defensive around relationships. They might even get, um, when they feel vulnerable or close to somebody, they push them away. And so they like to stay in a player type energy where their feelings aren't involved. And I get that this person had real feelings towards you and it made it to where they didn't want to give you up, Nine of Wands. They, it was a repetitive thing to where they, they wouldn't leave you alone, but they weren't able to offer you much here. There's a lot of chaotic energy in their life and they worry that they would be rejected if they came towards you because they, they because look, there's like the uh, Messiah here and then the hand with the heart and then like him, they, this person really, really looks up to you. Also look, there's a witch's hat here. So there is some negative energy. There is some dark energy involved here, especially with the five of wands. There are dark people involved that they have to fight off with the five of wands. The, this person is, uh, constantly in chaos, constantly in battles, constantly fighting. It's because they have uh, a lot of snakes in their life, but it's because they kind of have a snake energy, you know? This person comes in and acts like they want something with you, knowing the way that they are, knowing that they're gonna get scared and run away. You know, it's an avoidant type of person to where they do want love and they do want closeness and they do want a relationship, but it terrifies them. So the thought of being with somebody, being vulnerable, vulnerable with somebody scares the hell out of them and because this person is in and out and kind of a player they have a lot of enemies here they have a lot of people that wish them harm that might even use dark energy against them this person looks up to you quite a bit though you know with the messiah they see you as somebody that could save them they were looking at you as like the person that was gonna come in and save them from themselves, save them from this chaotic life that they have. They feel like you hold their heart in your hands and they're terrified of you rejecting them because I get if you reject this person, it is going to crush them and they know that. And it, you know, it's part of why they in and out of your life so much is because they don't wanna give you the power to hurt them, but you already have the power to hurt them. This person is, uh, <laughs> struggling a lot with the temperance here you see the angels this person has blockages in their third eye and crown chakra they're disconnected from their intuition they're disconnected from their divinity it's because they sleep around a lot so they have a lot of soul ties and they sleep around with bad people because this person fears commitment fears being vulnerable they strike up relationships with people that they know they don't have a future with, that they know can't offer them anything, that they know it's not gonna go anywhere. You know, it's it's a, a player type of energy where they, they kind of deal with dark people because um, they don't have to be vulnerable, you know? But they've gotten themselves tied up with snakes. So they have a lot of people in their life that wanna hurt them, that don't wanna see them doing well, that might even do magic against them. 
because this person is very selfish. And with the Seven of Swords here, you know, Seven of Swords can also be theft, stealing. The way that this, like, he broke this and ran away. I guess this person has a nature to them where they have kind of screwed other people over too. It's not just you. This person is very uh, selfish, very conceited, very focused on themselves. And I get that it really comes from their childhood with the Five of Cups. They have a lot of wounds from their childhood. They weren't able to trust their parents. They weren't able to let their guards down. They learned from an early age that relationships weren't safe, that other people weren't safe. Other people were gonna screw them over. So they kind of have this mentality of, I'm gonna screw everyone else over before they can screw me over. So this person goes around and kind of collects enemies here. They're doing some soul searching on like what they've done. They're starting to have, this person's having like a spiritual awakening here with this temperance card. They're starting to wake up to their patterns. They're starting to do some soul searching with the alien coming out. This person also might be looking into like star seeds, looking into um, the occult here. This person feels like an outsider. I feel like this person has felt like an outsider their whole life. And it's caused them to not really be interested in relationships. And they met you and you were somebody that they had a deep connection with and they finally felt like they could belong somewhere. And I think that that is really what scared them is because if I belong somewhere, if this per if I feel like I belong with this person and I finally feel safe with this person, I let my guard down, what if they reject me? Then I'm gonna like really not have anybody, you know? You're like this person's last hope. This is sad. You're like this person's last hope. Like, I feel like I'm gonna cry. Um, but they're also scared of like having that hope. <laughs> no, don't make me cry. I haven't cried in a reading in a long time. Um, the High Priestess, Eight of Cups. They know that they need to walk away from stuff. They've been keeping a lot of secrets. The high priestess can also point to spell work. Six of Pentacles. They had a. They were juggling a lot of people. Seven of Cups. Six of Pentacles. They weren't able to give their time to a relationship because they had several relationships up in the air. King of Swords. They need to cut these people off, but they have a lot of anxiety about relieving themselves of these burdens here. They want to go off on a new beginning. They want to do something new. They don't want to be in this constant chaos in their life. But there is um, a negative female. There is a, a dark female that they deal with. And I get that they just deal with this person because it's like easier just to, you know, <laughs> cheaper to keep her, easier just to like give this person what they want. You know, it's a Mona Lisa Saperstein. <laughs> you know, in Parks and Rec, Mona Lisa, where she's like, money please. And uh, John Ralphio is, is like to bend, just give it to her. It's easier just to give it to her, you know, just tell her yes. That's like, there's a very manipulative, dark person. The high priest is coming out again, as I said that. Yeah, queen of wands, three of cups. Somebody, yeah, look. Somebody is mentally abusive. It's a third party. They have a third party. It's a feminine energy. It's mentally abusive. It's nasty. Cuts them down. Talks shit to them. Uses spell work and uses sex. This person emotionally abuses them, uses them for sex, you know, is a hoe, is somebody that sleeps around a lot, uses spell work with the high priestess, the world card. It's a karmic. They have a karmic that they need to complete a cycle with. It's a dark karmic here. And it's something that they're like almost afraid of. They let this person run their life. They let this person do whatever they want because they're afraid of standing up to this person because this person throws a fucking fit. This person uses dark magic too. Yeah, it blocks this person from moving forward. Let's see. Can we clarify strength? Queen of Cups. Yeah. <sighs> Queen of Cups, Four of Cups, um, Three of Swords. They are heartbroken over this. They feel that you have rejected them. You've turned away from this person, Cancer, or Cross Watcher. Um, because the Queen of Cups is Cancer. Uh, because something I always see at this Queen of Cups, Queen of Cups is somebody that's very loving and a high vibration, loving, giving, nurturing, 
You know, she's a cancer. A cancer want to take care of you. They're very motherly. They want to make sure you're good. They want to, are you okay? How was your day? You know, cancers are very loving naturally when you get past that crab shell. But like, look at this queen of cups. She looks pissed off to me. She always looks upset. And it's so weird for this card because the queen of cups is usually so loving. But this, just this energy of her face is like a pissed off because on the flip side, cancers are very emotionally manipulative. This person um, rejected you several times because it's nine of wands. I get that this was a repetitive thing. They would come in hot and heavy, making all these promises. It would be a passionate, you know, passionate, maybe even sex, and then they would disappear. And they would come in and they would disappear. And it was because this person can't break away from you because they have such a strong connection to you, but they can't allow themselves to really feel their feelings for you. And they're terrified of feeling what they feel for you. But by rejecting you, this person is heartbroken because I get that you've turned your energy away from them. You're no longer allowing this person into your life. You've kind of um, cut yourself off from this person. You're no longer giving to this situation. And now they they are heartbroken because they feel like they're losing you and feeling you disconnect from them, even mentally, is really like hurting this person. They were in and out of your life and keeping secrets because they were blocked by chaotic energy here. They want to follow their heart and move towards you, but there are a lot of burdens that they need to walk away from. They need to heal before they can make an offer. They want to overcome this situation. They want to work things out and have victory with you because they know that they're happy with you. They want a relationship with you. They want union with you. This is twin flames. But there are things that they need to move away from and work on themselves. You know, the, the sun is shining on the king of wands. The fact that they are... Uh, this person uses sex to distract themselves from their fear of relationships. This person wants closeness. This person wants... Um, this person is just hurt. This is somebody that is hurting and they feel like they don't belong. They don't feel like they belong anywhere. So, you know, when they find people that will um, deal with them, put up with them, because I get this person has a hot, cold energy to them. And I get most people get sick of their back and forth behavior and eventually cut this person off. And I feel like when this person finds somebody that won't cut them off, that will kind of tolerate that behavior. They cling to that person, even if that person is really dark. And it's created a lot of um, relationships in their life where people are snakes and screw this person over, use this person, treat this person badly. And this person knows that, but they kind of feel like they deserve those sort of relationships because of the way that they treat other people. This person is very like split-minded. This person knows that the, the way that they treat people isn't great. They regret the way that they treat people. They feel bad about the way that they treat people. And it makes them feel like they deserve these bad relationships. Death card, seven of swords, ace of wands, wheel of fortune. This person is trying to turn their life around. They're realizing they can't go on this way. They're in absolute misery here. They're in absolute misery, misery because the one person that they found that they really loved, they pushed away out of fear. And since you've cut your energy off from them, their life has been absolutely chaotic because you were the only stable thing in their life. You were the only thing that really made them feel hopeful, that made them feel good. You were like a light in their very dark world. And they're realizing that they need to find their own light and they're not gonna find their own light being stuck in their wounds and allowing these bad people into their life. They want to change their life around. They want to change in fate with the Wheel of Fortune here. But they know they need to end this lying, cheating, sneaking around behavior, this screwing people over. I'm going to screw you over before you can screw me over. They know they have to end that. They've gone through a spiritual awakening here. <sighs> this person feels very motivated to change and it's really because they can't stand the thought of losing you and not having access to you ever again. I get that you you really were the like first person that saw them, that made them feel accepted, that made them feel loved, that didn't judge them. Yeah. 
There were burdens here that were blocking them. It was a third party. It was somebody that was using them for sex. They, uh, this person is very, very defensive. This person is very, very sensitive, very defensive. If you say one thing that they take the wrong way, they are going to cut you. This person is very argumentative, might have Gemini somewhere in their chart. They're very, very aggressive, argumentative, combative verbally. It's because they're defensive. They have a lot of uh, toxic energy that they need to heal before they, they want to be in a stable relationship, but they cannot be in a stable relationship with this. This person um, has some mental health issues. With justice, Ten of Cups. Yeah, this person wants to manifest you back with the magician here. They are focused on making you their wife, making you the one for them. They have left this other person out in the cold, this third party. They don't want to be with that other woman anymore. They're realizing that it's a burden. This other person is a burden. That relationship is only based in sex and it's very toxic. They want a new love. They want a new beginning in love. They've made a decision here. They want to take a leap of faith. Yeah, Will of Fortune again. Yes, they want to turn this around. They want a new beginning here. They want to bring justice to this situation because they know that they are happiest with you or vice versa. Take the energy how it resonates. It can go either way. They're happiest with you. And they also know with the 10 of cups, like I was saying earlier, this person does not have healthy relationships in their life. This person won't allow healthy relationships in their life. And they kind of see you and the relationships you have. Like they look at your community. They want to belong to your community. They like your friends. They see the way that you love your friends, the way that your, their, your friends love you back, and they want that. This person feels like they could fit into your community. This person feels like they pushed you away before, but now they're realizing that like they would fit in well with your family. They would get along well with your friends. That being part of your world would actually be really good for them and would help them find somewhere to belong because they don't belong where they've been because they intentionally have put themselves somewhere that they don't belong because they fear positive relationships so much because if I let my guard down and I am happy and loving and enjoying this moment with you, you could leave me and then I'm devastated. So I would rather <laughs> put myself in a living hell. So when you do abandon me, I don't care because you make my life hell anyway. That's how this person thinks. This person really needs to go to therapy to work some of this stuff out. Because loving relationships are very, very healing. But it is not fair to put the weight of your entire mental health and your, you know, life in a person's hands. It's not healthy and it's not fair. Because if that person has a bad day and they don't have the capacity to give to you what you're needing in that moment, you're going to flip on that person and this is what this person does. This person is super defensive and super... <sighs> this person struggles with their mental health. They're very defensive. They're very sensitive. So it's like they have a lot of triggers and they won't tell you when they're triggered because they're so defensive. They will just go off on you. And then they'll go and like do something vindictive to get back at you. And I get that when they have cooled off and they have had time to think, they recognize what they did was wrong and then they feel guilty and they beat themselves up about it. And it's a cycle that this person is stuck in. This person might have borderline personality disorder. This person struggles with relationships. They struggle with understanding boundaries in relationships. Sometimes this person has an enmeshment issue where they get really close to people and they kind of feel they have a hard time differentiated between like you and me. So when I, you know, I could just be tired. You know, I could have had a really long, hard day and I could be tired. I could be sick. I just am not in a good headspace. But this person um, is feeling very vulnerable and needy that day. 
and I'm not able to be what they want. And I get that this person isn't able even to really communicate what they need. They're not able, this person has not communicated that they're triggered. This person has not communicated that they have a lot of trauma, that they're easily triggered, that they have a lot of needs. This person doesn't communicate any of that. This person tries to base the relationship entirely on sex. Um, and they won't talk about their feelings. Um, but they still put their weight of, you know, they look at you like you are going to save them and they put that weight on you, but they don't tell you that. They don't tell you what they need. They don't communicate any of this. And so it's been a very back and forth relationship. I get strong borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is 100% treatable with therapy. It is. It is not like a narcissistic personality disorder where that person's a lost cause. Borderline personality disorder causes people to be abusive, yes, but if you go to therapy, you can work it out. It's 100% treatable. You just have to train your brain to understand your emotional responses and not to um, feel so out of control. This person feels out of control. Anytime this person feels slighted, anytime this person feels like you don't want them, that you aren't giving them the attention that they need, this could be somebody that could see you like, you know, like say hi to uh, the opposite. Okay, say that, you know, we're in a relationship, we're in a heteronormative relationship. I am, uh, you are walking to like over to, you know, pick me up to go on a date. On the way over, you like <laughs> brush uh, you know, uh, the opposite sex shoulder and you say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Have a nice day. They would take that as you were flirting with another person. You want to have sex with that other person. How dare you? You're cheating on me. I'm going to go cheat on you. I don't want to be on the date anymore. Bye. See you later. Don't talk to me. Turn their phone off. They go and have like sex with a bunch of other people, you know, and then they feel bad about it and feel shitty about it. And it makes them question their worth. Like, that's the type of emotional reactions this person has. This person blows things up and freaks out and like gets chaotic. And when they're in this chaotic mode, they um, are very vulnerable to toxic people. You know, if they have this toxic ex that uses dark magic, that uses dark energy, that manipulates them, that uses them for sex, when they're mad at you, they're gonna go back to that person because they know that person's gonna be there. You know, this person has some mental health issues. They, uh, head and heart. They know their heart belongs to you, but they have mental health issues that make it very difficult for them to give you their heart into, I don't get that this person has ever been in a loving relationship. I don't get this person was saw love and experienced love from their parents. This is getting really deep. I get that this person is just, has a lot of childhood wounds and it makes them not trust relationships. They don't feel safe in relationships and it causes them to abuse people that try to love them. And I get that this person, when they are in freak out mode, they just want to escape and hurt you back because they feel like you tried to hurt them. And then when they cool off and they recognize that what they did wasn't right, they beat themselves up about it. Nine of swords under the nine of wands. This person has a lot of anxiety. They struggle to sleep at night. They have nightmares. They are terrified of losing you. They, um, they're not talking to you right now because they're trying to heal. They've seen the truth in um, their behavior. They've seen the truth if they need to move away from this sneaky, cheating, lying behavior. They've made a decision that they do want to heal. They see you, this might be a twin flame relationship with the lovers. They see you as their counterpart here. They watch you and they watch you giving to other people. So this person is a jealous person. This person watches you being loving and um, giving your attention to other people. And I think part of them feels comforted by this because they feel like you could love them you know, they, they see that you're a loving person. And then part of them feels jealous because they want that. Um, they're trying to work on themselves. They want to move things forward with you, but they know that they need to work on themselves. This person knows that they need to heal. They feel really remorseful. They feel really sad. They feel sad. 
And I get that it might even verge onto some self-hatred here to where this person beats themselves up a lot about the way that they've acted towards you. It's really because they have a lot of mental health issues. If this is resonating, look up borderline personality disorder. A person with a mental disorder that refuses to get help, that doesn't see what they do is wrong, but doesn't want to get help, that's a lost cause. Somebody that recognizes what they're doing is wrong and wants to help themselves, you know, they're not a lost cause. And you can support somebody and wish them the best, you know, send them love, but I hope you get what I'm saying. If you have borderline personality disorder, it is 100% treatable in therapy. It is. It will not be easy, but you can overcome it. So that's kind of what I got, Cancers. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you have a good rest of your week, a good weekend. See you guys again soon. Bye.